Israel trip, Cornelius was a God-fearing man of the Gentile persuasion who heard about Peter and the new gospel of Jesus Christ. So he sent for Peter to come to Caesarea and share the gospel with his family and friends. And Peter would have rejected the opportunity to witness to people outside of the Jewish faith had it not been for a vision compelling him to go. And now Peter now is returning from his visit uh, where many were baptized into the body of Christ. And who was the first ones to greet him when he came back to Joppa? It was the synagogue welcoming committee or the church split, if you will. Uh, poor Peter, poor Peter, uh, he came home thinking that the brethren would rejoice with him that the gospel had been extended to the Gentiles, but instead he was greeted with anger. The critics were not splitting hairs over his sharing the gospels with the Gentiles, better yet, few of them, if any, would have objected to welcoming the Gentiles into the New Testament church. This was not the issue. The issue was that they were determined to keep the church door so narrow as to only allow those who were circumcised to enter. And by all means, they said, let the Gentiles come. But they first have to become Jews. Uh, they first have to submit to circumcision and live as Jews. In other words, Peter's critics were more concerned about the meal that he ate with them rather than the word that he fed to them. And how do you, let me just put a pin there. How do you know when you get so wrapped up and caught up in things that are not of the Bible? They're just ways that people feel, opinions of various individuals. Let me tell you something. Time out for all that kind of stuff. There's a whole world that's lost out there. And we need to be preaching and teaching unadulterated word of God. What a person wears does not matter. How a person looks doesn't matter. How a person smells doesn't matter. But it should all be about Jesus Christ. You see, eating with Cornelius was a breach of the Jewish law. Because it implied that Cornelius and his company had been received into the household of faith. And if that were so, the whole fabric of Jewish exclusiveness would be destroyed. And so they zealously believed that there was still a separation between the Jews and the Gentiles. They were not ready to let go of the old covenant in favor of the new radical method of salvation. Now, how many of you know we ought to just realize that in today, in 2010, uh, in this world that we live in, it's going to have to take some radical, oh, help me somebody, uh, we're going to have to come out of the box and do some extraordinary things to bring a thought result. No, we don't lose the principles. No, we don't lose the foundation. But let me tell you something, we may have to do some things that uh, we, we wouldn't ordinarily do. Oh yes, they were not ready to let go of the old covenant. And now before you side with Peter and kick his critics to the curb, consider how you feel when someone who just joined the church is extended some entitlements. The same entitlements that you receive as a long-standing and devoted member of the church. In other words, you've been sticking in here through plenty and want. Uh, you remember when the congregation was just a mere two or three gathered in his name. You served for years on a ministry or a committee or a team. You've been the backbone, the front bone, the hip bone, and the leg bone. And now here comes some new person full of zeal and desire to serve. And when the pastor welcomes this person with open arms, are you jealous? Uh, do you feel that they should be entitled to a bit more respect than you are counterpart? Do you think that the new member should have to endure some trials and tribulation? Uh, then I, if, if you feel like that, then I welcome you to the circumcision ministry or the great ministry. Oh yes, the circumcision. Uh, are those with a narrow view, not much of Christianity, but it's about membership. And let me tell you something. It's not about membership. 
You can have a church with 5,000, but if you only have five that are sold out for Christ. Oh, y'all, listen. Yeah, yeah, it's not about we can pack this place out Sunday after Sunday, but if the work of the ministry is not getting done, if we're not going in the highways and the byways, if we're still arguing and fussing over the trivial stuff that's not tied to salvation, then we just ought to close the door. The circumcision are those who demand that some external rules of conversion be followed. Yeah. Rules that go beyond the simple exercise of cognitive faith and the condition of brotherly recognition. And I want to warn somebody in here today, if that's you, you need to be careful because you are walking in the steps of the circumcision. This click, this click that greeted Peter in Joppa. They were small. They were a small band of elitists. Uh -huh. uh, but see, the rift that would continue to grow, and they would become Peter's bitterest opponents throughout his life, dodging him with slander and attempting to countermand his toil for Christ. And let me tell you that um, it's a terrible day in the life of the church when differences and opinions lead to the formation of cliques. It's a sad day in the church when we can't come together in prayer, when we can't come together and let the word of God direct us. It's a sad occasion when we have to turn to low-handed, underhanded things in order to promote the ball. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, any undisciplined zeal for truth is apt to enlist allies who become spiteful, they become malicious, they become blind, and it takes great restraint to keep your eyes on Christ, keep your chest from being poked out, and keep your heart in the right place. Amen. Peter, Peter answered his answer to his critics. It's the same answer that we should give to those who question our liberals in receiving new converts. We need to tell them that you are only following God's instruction. And let me tell you something, you know you're right. You can sleep at night. 